There is a common misconception surrounding the idea that individuals with diabetes should refrain from consuming fruit. While it is true that fruits contain natural sugars, having diabetes does not necessarily equate to eliminating fruit from your diet entirely. Rather, it implies the importance of making informed decisions about the types of fruit and the quantities consumed. Similar to numerous other foods, fruits have the potential to raise blood sugar levels. Frequent spikes in blood sugar can lead to an elevated aonic, which serves as an indicator of your average blood sugar levels. A high aonic level signifies that your body is facing challenges in effectively managing the condition. However, individuals with diabetes need not completely exclude fruit from their dietary choices. In fact, fruit can play a vital role in maintaining a healthy and well-balanced diet. The key lies in making mindful selections of fruits that are suitable for their specific needs and consuming certain fruits in moderation. Hi guys, in this video, we talk about the worst fruits for people with diabetes. Skip the canned fruit. Canned fruits are generally not the most ideal choice for individuals with diabetes due to a few reasons. Firstly, many canned fruits come packed in syrup or juice which often contain added sugars. These added sugars can significantly increase the carbohydrate content of the fruit and lead to a rapid rise in blood sugar levels when consumed. Managing carbohydrate intake is crucial for diabetes management and choosing fruits with minimal added sugars is important. Secondly, the canning process can affect the glycemic index of fruits. Some canned fruits, particularly those in syrup, may have a higher glycemic index compared to fresh fruits. Foods with a higher glycemic index can cause blood sugar levels to spike more quickly, making it harder to maintain stable blood sugar control. Be careful with dried fruits. It's important to exercise caution when consuming dried fruits, especially for individuals with diabetes. While dried fruits can be a convenient and tasty snack, there are a few factors to consider. Firstly, the drying process removes water from the fruit, resulting in a higher concentration of natural sugars. This means that dried fruits can have a higher sugar content compared to their fresh counterparts. Consuming large quantities of dried fruits can lead to a rapid increase in blood sugar levels. Secondly, portion control is crucial when it comes to dried fruits. Since they are dehydrated, their volume is significantly reduced as a result, it's easy to consume larger portions and inadvertently consume more carbohydrates and sugars than intended. Monitoring portion sizes and pairing dried fruits with protein or healthy fats can help mitigate their impact on blood sugar levels. Juices and smoothies can be tricky. If you have diabetes, it's generally advisable to be cautious with juices and smoothies due to a few reasons. Firstly, juices, even those labeled as 100 fruit juice, can have a high sugar content. When fruits are juiced, their natural sugars are concentrated, leading to a rapid increase in blood sugar levels when consumed. Additionally, commercial fruit juices often have added sugars, further increasing their sugar content. It's important to remember that liquid calories from juices can be quickly absorbed by the body potentially causing blood sugar spikes. Smoothies can also pose challenges for individuals with diabetes. While homemade smoothies can offer the advantage of including whole fruits, they can still be high in carbohydrates and sugars. Sweeteners such as honey or agave syrup may be added to enhance the taste, further increasing the sugar content. Additionally, smoothies often lack the fiber found in whole fruits as blending breaks down the fibers. This can result in a quicker release of sugars into the bloodstream. If you choose to consume juices or smoothies, it's crucial to monitor portion sizes and consider the overall carbohydrate and sugar content. Opting for smaller portions, diluting juices with water, or incorporating vegetables into smoothies to reduce the sugar load are strategies that can help manage blood sugar levels. However, it's generally recommended to prioritize whole fruits instead 
as they contain more fiber and provide a slower release of sugars. You must avoid watermelon. If you have diabetes, it is generally recommended to exercise caution when consuming watermelon. While watermelon can be a refreshing and delicious fruit, it is high in natural sugars and carbohydrates, which can impact blood sugar levels. People with diabetes need to carefully manage their blood sugar levels to prevent spikes and maintain stable glucose control. Watermelon has a high glycemic index, which means it can cause a rapid increase in blood sugar levels after consumption. This is due to its high sugar content and relatively low fiber content. Unlike other fruits that contain more fiber, which helps slow down the absorption of sugar into the bloodstream, watermelon's high sugar content can quickly raise blood glucose levels. However, this does not mean that watermelon should be entirely avoided by individuals with diabetes. Moderation is key. It is recommended to consume watermelon in small portions and consider factors like overall carbohydrate intake, meal planning, and the individual's response to different foods. It's important to work with a healthcare provider or a registered dietitian who can help create a personalized diabetes management plan that includes appropriate fruit servings.